Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing and thank you most of all for commenting. I really enjoy the comments and the interaction that we're having. And thank you for the growth of my channel. It's amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. The first thing I have today is a Tucker, Tucker Carlson interview with Steve Baker. You have probably recall I've mentioned Steve Baker several times in my daily news clips. He is the independent journalist who's been covering the January 6th so-called insurrection and uncovering all sorts of uh, interesting details about that that were not known or have been completely hidden from view. And as a result, he's been arrested by the FBI. And Tucker's going to talk to him about that. And I thought you might find this interesting. Among the many thousands of Americans who came to the Capitol building on January 6, 2021, were an awful lot of journalists, working journalists. And they were there because, among other things, it was a news story in progress. So they went to what we call cover the story. And the overwhelming majority of them worked for various organs of state media, the Associated Press, Reuters, The New York Times, The Washington Post, NBC News. And their job was to bolster whatever the people in charge claim is true. But there were also some independent journalists there that day. One of them was called Steve Baker. He now works for The Blaze. And he was there for the same reason everyone else is there, to watch the protest play out and to cover it. And like so many reporters that day, he eventually moved with the crowd inside the Capitol building, and he did so peacefully to cover the story. We're not guessing about this. He did not show up to break windows or poke anyone with a flagpole. He was there to cover it as a journalist. And we have footage of it of Baker in the Capitol. We're going to put it up now. You can see he's not rioting or attacking police. He's standing there watching what's happening around him, covering the story. But because Steve Baker wasn't wise enough to get a job with the Washington Post or the New York Times or any other news outlet that works for the Biden administration, the FBI singled him out, not as a reporter, which he is, but as an insurrectionist. And then they charged him with crimes for being there. The charges include disruptive conduct and restricted building parading, demonstrating, or picketing in the Capitol building. And they meant it. They weren't joking. And by the way, no one defended Steve Baker. None of the free press organizations that exist to defend working journalists stood up for him or said a word when Baker was arrested at the FBI office in Dallas. Here's video of Baker turning himself in. And as you can see, he was humiliated. They cuffed him behind his back, not because he posed a threat to anyone, but because they wanted to make the message crystal clear to everyone else. Only regime media will be treated as legitimate. Others will be crushed. Steve Baker joins us now to recount his experiences with the so-called justice system. Steve Baker, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, um, so thanks, when last, Tucker, for having me. Of course. When last we spoke about a year ago, um, there mm -hmm. were hints this was coming. I'll just speak for myself as a middle-aged American man. I didn't really believe that they could arrest a journalist for covering a story. They did ultimately, as we just showed, arrest you. Mm -hmm. Were you as shocked as I was? Probably not as shocked because I had been dealing with this for about two and a half years. I had initially had a threat of prosecution going all the way back to November of 21 when my attorney received a email from an assistant U.S. attorney out of Philadelphia in which she said, your client, meaning me, is going to be arrested or is going to be charged within the week. And so after we did a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a media pushback, kind of a, an offensive against that threat, then we didn't hear from them again for 20 months. Now, after 20 months, I was starting to feel pretty good about it. During that interim time, I actually spoke with you. And then... Uh, in August of last year, uh, we received a grand jury subpoena. My attorney calls me back, says, all right, we've got a grand jury subpoena for your work, your actual videos that you took on January 6th. We complied uh, yet again, and uh, then we didn't hear from them for another four months. Well, during this time, I'm now working for The Blaze, 
And so I was actually in D.C. As a matter of fact, I was sitting in uh, Representative Thomas Massey's office on December 14th, just this past uh, December. And I, uh, I get a text from my attorney, which is never a, a welcome thing, an unsolicited text from your attorney, which he said, I think this is the one, the big one. So I stepped out into the hallway there at the Rayburn building and called my attorney and he said, well, they want you to self-surrender next week in my hometown of Raleigh, North Carolina. So uh, the blaze went into high gear. We did another media offensive, had millions of views of this uh, the story that we were telling about me having to self-surrender, and they backed off yet again. They, we got another call the next day from the FBI saying that they were going to put that off until sometime after Christmas. Once again, we didn't hear from them for two months until two weeks ago we got the notice that I was going to have to self-surrender this time, and this time it was for real. They actually said that it was only going to be for misdemeanor charges, the four basic misdemeanors that all the low-level January 6 offenders get. Uh, and because I happen to be working here in Dallas right now, uh, where Blaze is headquarters, we decided to go ahead and do my self-surrender here at the FBI field office. So they didn't raid me. They didn't come out to my hotel or to the Blaze Studios. Uh, we went down to the FBI field office and submitted myself. Uh, the interesting thing, Tucker, is that in the notice from the uh, assistant U.S. attorney to my, my lead attorney is that they wanted me to show up at the field office, and I quote, wearing shorts, t-shirt, and flip-flops. And I knew what that meant. That meant that they were probably going to change me into the orange jumpsuit and that I would then be leg shackled because the plan was for the FBI to process me there at the, the field office, put me in a car, take me downtown to the courthouse where they would hand me over to the U.S. Marshals and then I would wait in a cell until I was marched before the magistrate in front of the, um, uh, the, in front of the whole court. And so what ended up taking place is that uh, my attorney negotiated with the two FBI agents in advance of me surrendering. I did not have to get into an orange jumpsuit. I showed up with a jacket, tie, slacks, dress shoes. They made me take off my shoelaces, my belt, and my tie, and then hand my jacket over to my attorney. Uh, then they took me, they allowed me to wear my own shirt, my own trousers. Uh, they handcuffed me, fingerprinted me, marched me out to the car, which has been seen on camera. Took me, to the, took me to the courthouse, handed me over to the U.S. Marshals, and that's where they put the leg chains, the belt chain, belted my wrist, uh, or chained my wrist to my stomach, and then sat me in a jail cell with a meth dealer. It's hard to believe <clears throat> any of that's real. A couple of questions. One, what's the name of the uh, assistant U.S. attorney who did this? Adam Dreher, out of D.C., yeah, Adam Dreher, I, I hope, becomes famous. It's not a threat, uh, but I think we deserve to know who is doing this. I mean, the state of Texas has more than a million uh, illegal invaders in it right now. Um, there are also an awful lot of murders in the state of Texas, and so this is what they're spending their time doing. I have to ask, did any of the FBI agents, we always hear that, you know, the line agents are good guys, did any of the U.S. Marshals say to you, you know, I'm embarrassed that I'm chaining you uh to, you know, chaining you to your own stomach on a misdemeanor charge for something that isn't actually a crime. Did anyone betray any acknowledgement that this is like all a farce? The, the two agents that processed me did not do that. I have received messages from retired whistleblowing yeah. uh, agents all over the country apologizing to me for the behavior of the uh, the once the agency they were once proud of, I will tell you that while they were patting me down and going through the process, uh, I did chat with them and I asked them point blank. I said, so how often do you do this to misdemeanor defendants? Uh, the first time there was a little bit of mumbling and then I kind of reiterated, I said, is this, is, is it, is it normal or do you get, do you do and process misdemeanor defendants on a regular basis as they're patting me down? Uh, they went, they were dead silent. And of course, that's because we know the answer, Tucker. Yeah. How, this, how about, how about speak up, son, I pay your salary. Like, how dare you treat me this yeah. way as an American <laughs> citizen? Seriously. Yeah. They didn't in, answer in the, your question. Yeah, in the hundred year. Yeah. In the hundred year history of that agency, hundred plus year history of that, they never 
processed misdemeanor defendants of any kind, particularly nonviolent misdemeanor defendants. Uh, it's, it, that's not what they do. I mean, every single FBI agent will tell you that when they joined the, the, uh, the agency, they were told that they were, they were on this uh, planet and in this country to go after the whales, not the tiny little minnows. But why don't they like quit? Me. That's what I don't understand. I mean, I, I've always respected law enforcement on principle and FBI agents, I guess, on principle. But if you're participating in a system that's just political tyranny, which is what it is, it's not a, it's not, there's nothing justice related about any of this. It's Joe Biden putting his critics behind bars. How can you live with yourself? Like, isn't at a certain point it their responsibility too? I, I've been analyzing that, <laughs> the answer to that question for quite some time now. And the only answer I have is that we're now into a generation of special agents and even special agents in charge that came in after the Patriot Act, that came in during the Obama administration, that came in after the politicization was overwhelming at the top in the leadership. And in fact, now the, you know, in most of the field offices, those in charge are, are political operatives by, by and large, Tucker. And so that's the answer. Now we'll tell you this, when I got to the courthouse, one of the uh, U.S. Marshals processing me down there, he actually looked at my paperwork and he said, point blank, this is bullshit. Yeah, and well, he's right. He's right. And good for him. Yeah. And I said, I, and, 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 yeah. And then he said, and he said, and I will tell you what else is bullshit. He said, we process a lot of these. He said, you guys, you know, you J6ers. And he said, I think that uh, former President Trump should be paying for every one of your legal fees. Well, I agree with that, too. I, I do agree with that. Yeah. And I think it's. Yeah, I strongly agree with that. Um, you can watch the rest of it yourself. I'll, I'll put the link in the description, as I always do. But it is really troubling that we have come to the point in our country where we are arresting journalists and for misdemeanor charges, we are putting them in handcuffs and leg irons and marching them through the courthouse like they're common criminals. But... <laughs> That's the point that we've arrived at. The only hope I see for the FBI and the DOJ is that they get completely disbanded and rebuilt from scratch. That's the only way. And there has to be laws passed by Congress that make it a crime, a felony, for them to be political. And if they are caught doing it, they go to jail, just like the people they're putting in jail. It's the only solution I see that's going to work. The next item on today's agenda is an article, the title of which is, It's Not About Trump. American C3, uh, C.J. Hopkins, charged again in Germany, describes a global censorship effort. This is a racket article, and if you read it, you'll find out that there's a guy who's a, a writer named C.J. Hopkins who was arrested and tried and found not guilty in Germany and unlike in America when once you're found not guilty you can't be tried for the same offense again he's being tried a second time for the same offense and you know what his offense was he wrote a book and in his book on the cover he had a, a, a depiction of the Nazi uh, flag it's subtle. You have to really look at it to see it, but that's his offense. He actually had a picture, of the, and his book was about being an, uh, against what the Nazis stood for. But he's being tried for it. That's in Germany. So you Germans that are watching, man, you, you've got some hoops to cover to go through there. It's not looking good for freedom in Germany. The next article I have is a discussion with Glenn Greenwald. If you're not familiar with Glenn Greenwald, he's an independent journalist who's uh, reported a lot of stories that uh, didn't fit with the mainstream narrative, and so he's gotten lots of pushback. And he discusses how free speech 
turned into a far-right slogan. Again, the links will be in the description. And then this one I just put in for kind of interest. Uh, I'm not going to read it to you or anything like that, but um, cops in New York actually arrested the owner of a $1 million home for changing the locks on squatters and charge her with unlawful eviction. Now, this to me is mind boggling. You own a home. This particular home belonged to her parents and it was given to her in their will. And so she wasn't living there. And there were squatters that had moved into the home just two days before she showed up because she wanted to sell the home. Two days before she showed up, squatters moved into her home. And in New York, for some reason, if a squatter is in your home for 30 days, they become the legal owners. How in the world does that make any sense? Well, she showed up two days after they had squatted on her property. And she went into the home, she kicked them out, and she changed the locks. And for that, she's been arrested and charged with unlawful eviction. Ugh, surely there's an attorney that will represent this woman for free. That is mind-boggling to me. And then the last item I have, again, I'm not going to show it to you. You can just watch it on your own. It's uh, it titled, Is America Losing Its Mind? It's a Prager five-minute video, and it stars Michael Knowles. If you're not familiar with Michael Knowles, he is uh, a conservative who travels around to campuses in the United States and debates with students about various issues that are hot topics like abortion, transgenderism, and those sorts of things. And in, in my mind, what he says makes a lot of sense. But I leave it up to you to decide that for yourself. But you can watch that video. Again, I put all the links in the description, as I always do. I put these articles out for you, and I, I make them available to you because I think that there are things that are not covered by the mainstream media that you might be interested in finding out more about. Um, I'm not trying to take a political stance on everything, on anything. As my loyal followers know, I'm neither Republican nor Democrat. Uh, I hate almost everything that's going on in America right now. I think it's a politicians are an absolute disgusting pile of stench that needs to be eradicated from our country. And we're just, we're, we're, America is a mess. It's just a mess. It's really a mess. And we have a long ways to go to get back to the Constitutional Republic that was founded 200, almost 300 years ago. And sad to say, America is probably the best hope for freedom in the world, which is kind of a terrifying thought when you think about it. But anyway, I hope you enjoy these. I'll keep doing them because it seems that at least a handful of people are interested in them. And for every one of you that watches my videos, regardless of your personal stance on politics, regardless of your religion, regardless of your race, creed, ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, I appreciate you viewing my videos. I really do. I'm thankful that you come to my channel. I'm thankful that you're willing to listen to what I have to say and that you consider me a friend. And in return, what I do for you is I pray for you. I pray every day that you will have an abundant life, that you'll live a long time, and that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray also that you will be anxious for nothing but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet, out.